Namaste. So today let's take a look at the preparation that one should do to get ready for doing the puja or making sacred offerings to the Lord. Now again, I'm going to use Ganesh and since Ganesh is the son of Shiva, I'm using the three, three pundra, huh? the three marks of Shiva. Uh, the Vaishnavas use the Urdva pundra, the vertical lines, two lines, and uh, the dot in the, or line in the middle, the red dot. Um, so it just depends on which deity you're worshiping, which one is your Ishta Devata. So the first step is to prepare the sacred water. And how we do that is by taking ordinary water, putting in the Achamaniya Patra, and then using the Ankusha Mudra. Ankusha Mudra is like this. It represents an elephant goad. And then wrapping the sacred thread which is charged with Gayatri Mantra. We use this mantra to call all the sacred rivers, stirring clockwise with the finger, not touching the nail to the water, only the finger. Gange cha jamune chaiva godavari saraswati narmado sindhu kaveri jale smin sanidhin kuru. So now all the Sacred waters have been called to the Achamaniya Patra, which has a, a drop of rose water in it too. And you should use real rose water, not with chemical flavoring. Okay, so in, in this container, we have the sacred ash. You can buy it in India. It comes in little packets like this or at your local Indian grocery store. And just put a little bit in there. And then we pour this sacred water, let it dissolve for a minute, and then we can stir that too. Now, there's no special mantra or anything for that, but we use the Ankusha Mudra. And now the sacred ash is ready to apply to the 12 places of the body. So now the vibhuti mixture has been made. You have to experiment with the mixture, not to make it too thin or too thick. Huh? But then you can put your three fingers into it and get some and apply it to the forehead. Om Namah Shivaya. And apply enough so that it can go all the way across from the tip of the eyebrow to the other tip. And it has a little downward curve in it. I always put it on the side too. It helps. And then Om Namah Shivaya on the neck. Om Namah Shivaya on the heart. Om Namah Shivaya on the belly, then the shoulder, Om Namah Shivaya, on the upper arm, Om Namah Shivaya, and on the forearm, Om Namah Shivaya. Similarly, the other side, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. And finally, on the back, in the base of the neck, Om Namah Shivaya. And at the lower back of the waist, Om Namah Shivaya. So that's the 12 places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Then finally, for the bindu that signifies Devi. I take the water and dip my little finger in. And then I take the kunkum, which comes in a little jar like this. And I dip my finger in 
So I get just a little bit on the tip. Then I apply right here on the third eye. Bingo. Now that's how you make and apply the vibhuti and the tree pundra. So what is the meaning of it? What is the significance? What does it do? Huh? Well, first of all, the meaning is that this world is made up of dualities and trinities, doubles and triples. And the dualities are like night and day, hot and cold, light and dark, right and wrong, good and bad, and so on. And the trinities are like the observer, the object, and the awareness. Huh? The three things that go together, or the three modes of material nature, sattva guna, raja guna, and tamaguna. Or they could be the three uh, principal deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Uh, there's so many <laughs> different possible interpretations. Okay, or it could be the trishul, the trident of Shiva. In any case, we put these marks on 12 places of the body to sanctify the body. Now, what's the meaning of that? Well, gross and subtle purification is needed to prepare for worship, to make the offerings. Uh, because the body has both gross and subtle centers. Uh, so on the gross level, the body uh, emits various secretions, <laughs> trying to find a delicate way to say it. Uh, and uh, at different points in the body, and these are ways of eliminating toxins from the body. So in order to uh, absorb these toxins and purify the centers of the body, and we apply the sacred ash. Uh, and this ash is made from the uh, ashes of the sacred fire. And when the sacred fire, the Homa, or the Agnihotra fire is made, after the sacrifice is completed, the ashes that are left are then heated again, very, very hot in a crucible, and they become white like this. And uh, this is very, very pure. So when it's applied to the body, it purifies that part. Now, uh, as I said, there are various secretions that come out in different places on the body. And this ash is not only extremely astringent, which means it absorbs every liquid that it comes in contact with. It's also very, very alkaline. And it's a great medicine. Uh, if you have acne, athlete's foot, any kind of infection, like a sore that won't heal or a, a cut that's open, you can smear these ashes on them and it will heal it right up, close it right up, suck out all the poison. So it's a great medicine. Uh, so and in a subtle body, the energy body, prana, sharira, uh, there are several, several centers. Okay, actually there are supposed to be like 10,000 nadis or something like that. Uh, too many to keep track of anyhow. So um, what we do is by putting the ashes on the principal nadis, the principal energy centers, then this absorbs and poisons and uh, purifies the energy at that site. So the body becomes pure. And what is the benefit of that? Well, first of all, we can approach the Lord easier if the body is purified, both the subtle and the gross bodies purified. And another thing is, he will be more likely to accept our offering <laughs> if we're pure when we approach him. So in other words, one should begin by taking bath very nicely. Uh, always wear the sacred thread if you've been initiated into the Gayatri Mantra. And uh, if not, then you can simply uh, chant the Gayatri Mantra on your fingers. Okay, and this is a purification of the mental body. So the mental body is purified by Gayatri Mantra, and the energy body 
and the uh, gross body are purified by application of the sacred ash, vibhuti. And so uh, this Tripundra mark is the signification of a follower of Shiva. Now, who is Shiva? Some people say he's the demigod of the Tamaguna. But actually, no, he's Ishwara. He's Ishwara. He's the controller. He is not exactly in the physical universe. His position is called Tatashta. Tatashta means at the borderline or in between. So he's not exactly in the formless Brahman, and he's not exactly in the form of the created universe either. He's in between, Tatashta. So Shiva does not take any avatars. Avatars are only of Vishnu. Why is that? Vishnu being the maintainer of the universe. He appears in various times and places when necessary to correct the wrong functioning of uh, the universe. If especially the human race gets off the track, he will show up and make everything right. So in this way, Vishnu is uh, more involved with the maintenance of the physical universe. Brahma, of course, is the creator. And Shiva, at the end of the Mahakalpa, destroys everything. Now, that doesn't make him tamasic. That simply makes him the controller. Huh? Because to God, Brahman, huh? we accept Brahman as God, the supreme, the source of everything. To, to Brahman, Nothing is gained by the creation of the world and nothing is lost by its destruction. It's simply a play. It's just a show. Huh? It's God entertaining himself by projecting a, a like a virtual reality. Huh? These computer examples are so illuminating sometimes. So this universe is like a virtual reality. But we want to wake up. We want to get out of the virtual reality and back to the real reality. And what is that? Aham Brahmasme. I am Brahman. I can't be anything else because Brahman is everything. Everything comes from Brahman. And Brahman is within everything and is everything because he is the root substance of the universe. So by putting these marks on our body, we remind ourselves, we purify the body, and we remind ourselves that, oh, okay, this is just a show. This isn't real. This is just a temporary manifestation uh, of phenomena. Phenomena have a beginning and an end. But the reality has no beginning and no end. And we are already that. So another meaning of this Trishul, or sorry, uh, Tripundra, <laughs> is that Shivo, hum, I am Shiva. I am in control of my reality. And how do I do that? First of all, by right view, by seeing the reality as it really is. And this requires some knowledge, yes. It requires some teaching. And that's why all the great souls teach that Aham Brahmasme, uh, Om Tat Sat, uh, and all these uh, Maha Vakyas from the Vedas, these little sayings that embody the eternal truth. And finally, of course, Aung. Now, Aung has three letters, A, U, and N. And then, there's the little dot on the top, right? The dot, which is a silent half beat. So that also stands for the three stages of consciousness, so-called waking, <laughs> dreaming, deep sleep, and finally, Turiya, the fourth, which cannot be described because it's like Nirvana, Nibbana, enlightenment. 
self-realization. So by thinking over all these things and reminding ourselves of the real nature of what we perceive of as reality, uh, being just a dream, uh, merrily, 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 life is just a dream. Then we can go ahead and do the puja and make the offerings in the proper state of mind. Aung Tatsat, Aung Harihi Aung.